Um, how I set up a little bit of this talk is, especially for people who is not a product manager, I know some of you are, uh, so uh, feel free to contribute to anything you see fit. And, uh, and for the people who's not, I uh, hope you find it interesting. So after this introduction, I asked already, um, um, let me really quick ask, uh, I asked already who is a pre-M already. Uh, is anyone who uh, has started a company before? Has started a project, okay? And engineers, who is an engineer in your room? Okay, perfect, just to get a sense of, also this question of technical or not technical. So, um, Maybe some of you will find this obvious, but it's not so obvious why why is there a growing demand for managers? And if some people don't even realize there's such a demand. Actually, I think even companies are not aware that they actually need a program manager. And I think that's the opportunity also for people who want to work on this to introduce themselves as program managers and find opportunities that weren't there in the beginning. And the reason is, as somebody said, I don't remember who it's somebody, but software is eating the world. And, and that's the thing, all the society is changing because Everything can be changed through software, um, and it's core. It's not, not not anymore a layer or some nice add-on. It becomes core to many companies to have good software development. Um, and this core area is not cannot work on its own. Like it feels sometimes that I don't know marketing can work on its own or you know or human resources work on its own. On its own, it needs to be integrated somehow. And um, well, I added this. Thing that building software isn't like some business people think, like producing uh, in a factory line. This is not a factory, this is a non factory workers. You cannot just ask, let's build this, to call me back tomorrow. You need to understand what's going on there to be able to, to, to actually build the best products. And, um, and to make it work, there's a different skill set here. It's not a specialist skill set, it's an open skill set that demands different uh, types of knowledge, and this is what we're going to talk a little bit about it. Uh, now, um, okay, start from the obvious. Uh, who, who has seen this before? Okay, perfect. Okay, I'm just going to pass the slide. <laughs> uh, but just real quick then, uh, this guy, Martin Erickson, who totally recommends the blog if you don't know it already, um, came up with this simple idea. It's simple, yet I still have to, when I joined the company, some of the people, few people have seen it, few people hasn't. Uh, I, I did some one-to-ones, I'll talk a little bit about this later, um, and, and I was pretty sure they didn't know what my job was going to be in the company, so I took some time to do one-to-ones to tell them, look, this is what I'm going to do, more or less, just to get an idea, they yeah, wanted to get, them to, to, to get something, uh, this was the, the clear idea that I wasn't going to be you know, a marketing guy, a business guy, or even for sure not a developer. Uh, what I wanted to make sure that everyone worked together, uh, you know, and was still productive and wasn't a matter of, you know, in many companies still, it's very easy and very quick that departments become like teams, and you know what happens there are teams, there's competition, and that's not the goal of company. <laughs> it's competition is outside, not inside the company. So I see that as, uh, that as a clear goal, and this graphic explains it very good. Um, I don't know if you have read this book, uh, The Hard Thing About Hard Things. Uh, this guy called Ben Karowitz. He has, it's a, it's a completely recommendable book, and he has this uh, uh, text about a uh, good product. I'm just going to read four lines. It's a one page text, but I think it's worth reading four lines. And I don't agree 100% with what it says here, but I think it's still worth it because it, if you read the book, you'll realize this guy has amazing experience, and in a way, he actually was the first one to see the product management as we're talking about right now. Before I do this, actually I want to make another point. Um, product manager, it's a word that has different uses. And I'm not sure, I, I think we're all thinking about the same thing in this room now. Um, but if you go to an automotive country, a company like Chavi, um, for example, there's a product manager that runs a certain model of car, and his responsibility is that the car gets whatever, produced or marketed or depends on the company. The same for beer, or drinks, any uh, consumer product. They have a product person who takes care of that product in terms of the shelf, the marketing, and all kinds of stuff. As you probably know, and I'm hoping, but just wanted to make the point, 
what we're talking here is that this position, this new position that basically connects all these things because the product now is the, the technology that, that uh, the user is using. And it sometimes might involve not technology, but still you have to connect all these dots. I talked a lot, everything good? Yeah? <laughs> okay, good. Anyway, so I'm just quickly going to read this because I think it's worth it. And this guy said in this, <laughs> in this explanation that you can look up, it's uh, bad, uh, good product manager, bad product manager. He says, good, good product managers know the market, the product, the product line, and the competition extremely well, and operate from a strong basis of knowledge and confidence. A good product manager is the CEO of the product, which is something I don't completely agree anymore. A good product manager takes full responsibility and measures themselves in terms of the success of the product. They are responsible for the right product, right time, and all the, that entails. A good product manager knows the context going, the company, or revenue funding, competition, etc., and takes responsibility of devising and executing winning plan, no excuses. So if this text goes on, and it's really interesting, but the basic idea is that you're responsible. <laughs> you know, responsibility to the point, you're, you're, you're responsible. Especially when things go wrong. Um, uh, yeah. That's that. I think it was worth it. This first introduction. Um, so, one of the things you'll find a lot online, if you, if you after this talk, you you you, you seriously, or before this talk, hopefully, you already seriously want to uh, move into program management. There's a, there's already some content online, and and most of the people talk about the skills because because like you think you need certain uh, group of skills. And I'm going to talk about the, the, the hard skills and the soft skills. Uh, but the idea at the end is that all these skills need to, to achieve what we were talking before, which is connecting the dots and remind everyone that, that we're in the same boat. And this is something, again, when you're in the middle, trying to make all the teams are, you know, are, 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 are understand why the other teams are doing certain things and why we're all going against the, you know, towards the same goal. Um, sounds simple, but it's easy, very easy to forget. Um, because um, <coughs> we can share some experiences here with Jordi, um, in some situations everyone is right, but that doesn't mean all these rights are compatible. You, know? you might be right, I might be right, but that doesn't mean we're going to make it work. You know, we, apart from right, we might agree, we should agree to make it work, right? So, uh, and the second thing I wanted to share before the skills also is, is that, that you're not a specialist, and everyone can see that. And, and and this is going to be a main challenge when you talk to people in the different departments that they know that they know more than you about what they're doing, but you still want to tell them something about what they're doing that has to do with what somebody else is doing. And that's uh, hard because you have to be very convincing. And this is going to come with the soft skills. Uh, but it's for me, and again, some people that those part in this room could disagree, and I super open for them to raise their hand. My personal experience, and you're gonna see this, I emphasize a lot the soft skills. I emphasize a lot, extremely, the ability of really communicating, of really convincing, argumenting, explaining why, you know, even taking into account emotions, personal opinions, all kind of stuff, on top of the hard skills. And I allowed myself to use this graphic, I start with a list, and then I went, look, whatever. Let's put this graphic I found online. This guy, Dan Smith, did it really good. He, he, in my opinion, he forgot some things and in some other way added too many, but it makes the point. There are some hard skills and whatever. If you're a marketer, you need the other ones. If you're an engineer, you need the other ones. If you're a designer, you need the other ones. And the problem to me is that if you are some of the things, designer, marketing, or engineer, you feel like you're your strong point is strong enough to not need the other ones too much. And this is the bad news, or good news if you like learning stuff, is that it doesn't work like that. You either learn the other things, or, um, or, you, or you're going to always be a little bit, you know, uh, be able to accomplish the goals and Also, quick parenthesis, I'm thinking also about the fact that this description I'm giving also is very based on my experience, which is just startup experience. And when I mean startup, I mean, you know, um, I was thinking now, for example, Paul gave a talk a month ago here, and his experience is in Typeform. I think some of the things might I say might not be applicable to Typeform, 
or some of the things I say might not definitely be applicable to a bigger company. This is mostly uh, for startup experience. And I'm going to talk about this yet later also, how do I think you should approach the product manager opportunities to move into product management. My uh, opinion is that uh, unless you are given certain opportunity in your company, if it's a good opportunity, take it. But if not, startups are a place where you can do certain things that you wouldn't be allowed to do in some of the bigger companies. So it's, a, it's an opinion, but, uh, but it's my opinion. <laughs> so, uh, so all this. Very, very clear, the three boards, like before, the three circles, and this guy made an uh, interesting effort of connecting how, you know, how the, uh, each team is connected, and it's interesting, but at the end it's the same as, you know, if you, uh, you need to know the basics of marketing, or <coughs> the basics, again, there's going to be somebody else running the market you want, but he's going to speak to you in some moments that you need to understand. There's going to be somebody who's designing better things than you, and you might, you should be able to either have the same conversation with the same vocabulary, Paul, but also find a way to explain why what you learned from here and here needs to be applied there. And sometimes, well, in my experience again, is that this is your strong point. It's very hard to transmit, but if you talk to a designer, for example, in general, it's hard to find designers that uh, have learned more about UX, for example, in terms of even uh, user behavior or even psychology or stuff like that. And, and this is generalization, but many designers are very good at aesthetics sometimes. And not the best ones, I, I hope you don't mind the generalization here. But I don't know, there's this uh, book that, the, that I read um, called uh, Don't Make Me Think which is a super basic book, completely recommended to everyone, it's super quick to read, and it talks about these basic things that even him says like, hey, this is, this is, this is about achieving a goal in design, but I'm not gonna get into the design conversation, but anyway, they're very, books. they're very good books, and this is a, another thing I would recommend at the end, that for me the main source are some things on the internet and books that should be read if you want to be a solid product manager. There's no, I mean, experience is a, Key, of course, but there's some knowledge that it's already in the books why, you know, reading in the world. And I added some, some things here at UX, I don't know why, when he says, yes, he says uh, user research here, I, I don't know why I prefer to put UX, is the user instead of design, which I like. I like because, I like because the use of the word design is completely, I don't know how to say this, it's wrongly used most of the time, when people say design, they think aesthetics, and don't they don't think functionality. Uh, so I like that with the users, but still, uh, he didn't put much, if I'm not wrong, about, you know, in general, uh, software development methodologies and stuff like that. Um, productivity, he didn't put productivity, which for me is a skill, um, multitasking and, and, and stuff like that, writing. I understand that he wanted to make the point of these three things, but for me these things are also critical, the way to, um, do some documentation, which I can do much better, but it's good that the CTO is here because I, I'm, you know, I'm not just bullshitting you all the time. <laughs> good? Yeah. Okay, good. Do you don't have any questions? Is it because I'm talking too fast? You don't agree? That's clear. Okay, good. You know, my expectation was the first row would be full, so I'm not 100% happy because there's a seat here, but okay, I'm <laughs> No pressure. <laughs> Um, so I, I brought this slide up yesterday last minute because I thought it was worth putting with uh, hard skills. This is a self-made graphic. There's no, uh, uh, I didn't find it any blog, but so there's no guru saying it. So be careful with taking it too serious. But uh, but it's my own experience. When I joined uh, Carnovo, is the it's kind of like the. Uh, first company when we were building a product that was in a scale I had not had the opportunity to build before and, and the first 50 days was an opportunity to do certain things in a certain way and, and I came up, had to come up with a way to organize it better and I came up with this structure. Uh, I'm going to share with you this graphic also this presentation actually it's in my medium you can check it out and, um, but 
the idea, I, I'm not the first one to propose a, you know, a flow like this also, but it helped me to, to, to structure it in the, not only in what kind of process is going in every step, but also what kind of meetings you should set up for every step, and then what kind of tools I use. Again, this is my personal experience, and this song might change, but they have to fulfill, of course, the kind of process you're, um, you're trying to, um, to make. And then the documents that allow these processes to, to, to happen. Um, it's the first time I actually have to explain it, so I'm going to try to make it um, make sense. But, but it's pretty self-explanatory. In the discovery period, which also Paul in his talk talked a, a, a lot about, and again, I think this is different from the size of company he has and the type of startup we are, but you have to separate the discovery process from the actual execution process. And the reality then also is very hard. In our case, the day to day sometimes doesn't let you do this kind of stuff, and it's the reality. Um, but, but that's why it's good to have a certain kind of guide that helps you remind you, that reminds you what you're not doing good because by the description, by these, by the books uh, that are being written about product management, it's impossible. Like when you read one of those, like really, uh, you want somebody who's doing all this? And I think there are certain things that then you have to adapt to your reality. And I'm not saying you don't have to do this, this is a must, but there are certain things that you definitely have to do. Yeah, measure, I mean, I don't, I think it's self-explanatory. I don't know if I, I think maybe I don't know. Is it too obvious? Uh, I don't okay, good. <laughs> what are the users here? Okay, the users is what is the result of every pass of the step. So you understand the users. You know the user needs in every pass of the step. You measure whatever the users do in every in the second step. You build something for what you've learned for the users. The users are not themselves either a step or either you know, a tool. You define it depending on the step and then they go everywhere. They are everywhere in reality. When, when you decide how to prioritize, you, you keep the users in mind. The other thing is soft skills. I don't know how I'm going in time. I'm super late, no? Or what? <laughs> what time did we start it? 7.30? Uh, okay. We still have two more hours. <laughs> <laughs> so soft skills. The image for soft skills is me talking to status in Stanford, which I lived in Palo Alto, so I went because this is how I feel sometimes. Basically, I'm talking to status and they don't talk back. They're white and nice, you know, they're in a good university. I'm like, come on, talk back to me. And they're not talking back. And, and, and <laughs> I feel like apart from all these triangle things, hard skills, you know, knowledge and, you know, KPI, CAC and stuff, all the kind of stuff, um, this is critical. This is critical because at the end, and uh, you, you're talking with people. And then this is not going to happen just by knowledge. We're not working with AI yet. They're going to take over so much because we're so fucking complex as person that when AI actually works, they're going to take over for everything because they just, you know what I'm saying? Yes, they're, they're going to be like this. I'm going to be like, no, wait, wait, I said meant there. No, you meant there. You wrote me an email. And this is what happens every day, right? Um, so about soft skills. This is not a joke. I actually been called the therapist of the company. Santi uh, told me therapist is a psychologist because at the end I actually tend to end up listening to people. It seems nobody cried on my shoulder yet, but. <laughs> uh, but but it's true. And this is and in fact I'm gonna jump uh, directly to the third. And again, patience. And I always say the same. Patience is a superpower. Again, the other thing we've talked about is important, the discovery process, and you're going to find a lot of content on that online, and, but if you're moving into product management, this type of skill set, especially at the beginning, when you're still not you know, up to you know, the rhythm of the company and everything, having these soft skills is going to allow you to navigate this situation, especially the not knowing certain stuff or not being able to, you know, or not knowing what to expect of certain situation, like oh, what he knows this and he's gonna know, and then how we're gonna do this. There's a lot of such skills and patience. 
going to make a huge difference. The other, uh, the other, no, no, no. Um, I was going to say something about the flight. I think it was anyway. What what, what is it? SJ. Empathy. Empathy. Oh yeah. Uh, Steve Jobs. <laughs> so, um, so empathy, you know, I, I'm a big fan of Steve Jobs, not about him, the way he managed people, and I'm completely the opposite way. You know, I care too much. I, in fact, I care too much about how people are feeling, and I, it's a problem sometimes, I have to say, because sometimes I would prefer to just not give a fuck, but I actually care. Somebody's mad at me, I, I, I mean, my wife there uh, knows uh, that <laughs> I'm not happy. If I go back home and somebody said, go fuck you, which they don't do, but they mentally said it, and I felt it, you know, it's like, which doesn't happen often, but I'm too worried. I think it's better for me to be in this position, because if you worry about people, at the end it's gonna work out better, because again, it's, it's a matter of team. But, the reason I said, like, is Steve Jobs okay? Because I think Steve Jobs was very empathic in the way that he was able to put inside uh, people's goods, but he didn't care so much. He said, this, what you're doing is shit, or stuff like that, because he knew he can, you know, you, can, you could make better, so he didn't care if you were crying. This is, uh, I've read a decent amount of books about Steve Jobs, and this is my conclusion. He didn't care because he knew that um, eventually people will realize that they could do better, which we all can. We all can be much, much better than we are. Um, but, but he was very empathic. He was able to understand not only consumers, but in general people, and even manipulate them in this case uh, with his reality distortion field. So I think the least is to have that, and then if you're not good at managing people, okay, but at least be empathic. But the ideal one is to actually then be good at, 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 at reading people and, you know, uh, getting what you think is the common goal through convincing more than through, I don't know, shouting or whatever. I think this is a good point also to say another important thing, and I've, maybe if you've read uh, already stuff about program management, you've seen that you're nobody's boss, and you're not anyone's boss. You're not, you don't go anywhere and say, hey, let's do this because I say it. This doesn't happen. And this, is, this makes things harder, but at the same time makes, uh, when things happen, they happen better. Because people actually did something because they wanted to, because either you convinced them or you reached an agreement that was the actual best thing to do. And it forces you also to understand why they don't want to do something, which for me is also the critical knowledge to have. I mean, this is a generic, not generic, I mean, words that, that are very clear. I mean, zero ego is the, I guess, the hardest because ego is necessary also a little bit, and we all have our ego, but, and some people think, and again, it depends on the company, but some people think, especially if you're head of product or somebody who, in theory, has the last responsibility on product, you're kind of a visionary, you know, some kind of Steve Jobs, like, oh, this is what gonna do, this and the user is gonna get it, and this, is not what happens. I mean, most of the ideas, the best ideas of the company come from somewhere or the company from me, and my job in this case is more like about detecting them, surfacing them in the, in the process of prioritization and putting in the, and defining them the right way. Uh, so if you think you're an artist, I mean, the, the, I, mean I paint paintings in the weekends, and this is my artist part. Um, I mean, of course, open-minded because of these ideas that come up sometimes from unexpected situations, unexpected people, to actually really consider every idea and discard it very quick once you consider it. Um, and, I mean, creative thinking, uh, creative in general is has to do with open mind. In general, I mean, the basis of creativity is that we filter ourselves. So when you stop filtering yourself, you get much crazier ideas that can become good ideas. Um, human behavior and psychology, I added for the market and for the people managing and for the market, clearly there are some very good, very good books on, 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 on behavior, on consumer behavior, and human behavior. And this is very useful to know, you know, that how we compare things can make us choose something that the company actually wants, but also can help you understand why certain dynamics inside teams uh, happen and solve certain problems that will eventually allow you to build a product. I know it doesn't seem connected, but it is connected. That's why I put so much emphasis to it. Um, I added for the, I mean, I added culture. It's more, but I think 
I was having lunch today with uh, Dunia and a couple of more people who also works in Perth, and um, and uh, uh, one of them uh, is actually the co-founder of a company, Alvin, and so the product guy is the co-founder, and this can change a lot of stuff because he actually does everything thinking in terms of product culture. So when you actually talk something, you know that the co-founder actually cares about the product, so it's not, you know, if it's founded by a business guy, the criteria will be different. It's, by, it's founded by a you know, designer, the criteria will be different. If it's founded by an engineer, the criteria will be different. If it's founded, in my opinion, and especially in this case, uh, this case, I know the guy is founded by a product person, the criteria in general of the decisions will be different. It will be product, product, product center. Most of the decisions will be like, are you, you know, have you tested these? Are you sure about this? Have you validated this? Uh, are you, you know, even the tech team will think in terms of the product or apart from each one's experience, the product will be different in the center. I think this is uh, super hard, especially one again is the CEO is some kind of profile which is perfectly valid also. Um, but, but I don't know, we had to launch this uh, day and I was thinking about it. And uh, I added system thinking. I mean, it's uh, I've read a couple of books on, on, on systems, and I think at the end, everything is system and allows you to own there's just at least to run, write and um, read one or two books on system thinking is a good, good thing to understand everything is connected. Uh, at the end, uh, authority, and I added authority because um, when people think about authority, it means that you can say, hey, you do this, and this is not. The one I, what I mean by authority is that. Um, that that if you think something is better, you have authority when you are able to convince people through words and they know that you're not just trying to convince them to everything you think. You know, they know you're being honest. That's why I added to the be honest. I mean, for me, authority is a lot, has a lot to do with respect and being honest. If you're honest and you respect other people's opinions, at some point, you know, you get some percentage of authority that, that, that can be, you know, useful when there's some doubtful situation where you know it's not about your ego. This is a... Um, okay, my thoughts. Again, this is my personal opinion. If you're not into product already, uh, the first question is the size of the company you might join. The size will mean different type of role that you will play. Obviously, your background will, will, um, will change this also. But... Uh, uh, the first thing is that it's smaller, will give you more opportunity to contribute, bigger, more opportunity to understand big processes and you know big teams, which will, will also definitely be very helpful. Um, my experience is mostly in smaller companies, and where I've been able to build a lot in very big, I mean very small, in, in, in not so much time, and contribute a lot. The type of so far, my experience, the type of I mean the type of jumps means that you keep growing the size of your company or the kind of company you join instead of so far joining then a bigger company in a smaller role because the kind of skills that you develop is feeling very comfortable to running you know five or ten people teams and uh, I don't know and touching a little bit of everything and this is also the last thing is um, uh, the way to jump product is that it would be ideal if you have a little bit of mix of experience, which I always say, you know, my profile is a little bit weird, and my wife says, this sounds bad, don't say that, but, but it's true. My profile is like, yeah, I did some marketing, I did some e-commerce, and then I run this startup program, and then I started this, you know, this startup called Steve's, and then, and then I did some, this house for entrepreneurs in Palo Alto, and then it's, and it's like, but wait, wait, you're not a specialist of anything, you don't know anything. Yeah, that's true, but that's the, that's the point, you know, and so, if you find a way to know that you know enough, but especially that you know how to connect these dots, that you know why doing certain things in marketing is good for whatever, or the opposite, why you know certain things in software development are good for marketing or stuff like that, that you know that you're able to work, you know, to another argument would it be correct? No, to argument, argument that, no, to what? No, 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 argumentar, like to to. I'm not dark, I use some negative, it's not this good. No, I like to, <laughs> to convince, I don't know how you say it. Prove Just your point. Prove your point, exactly. Okay, thank you. Um, this is my point. 
this is at least my experience again. Um, I've looked around and I found uh, different points, but I don't find that many way, places where you can find people's experiences becoming a programmer. There are some actually, if you look it up, there are some. Uh, at the end, uh, they'll put the references of only some of uh, the ones I, I, I like, maybe I forgot some, but there was one I, I did uh, some years ago that's called, uh, it's a Udemy course called Becoming a Program Manager. It's that simple, it's a guy from, what? Exactly, you did it, you've done it? Okay, it's good, it's good. If you've done some, you know, some startup or you do startup work, I mean, in general, you'll know some of the stuff, you'll talk about you know, a lot of stuff that in my opinion actually has evolved from in general the startup knowledge, um, apart from the specifics of Scrum, for example, but in a way also. Uh, but it's good because it puts you a little bit of order on the knowledge. Um, okay. Okay, this is my, again, my personal experience with, maybe there's too much letters. I, I, I'm not sure I wanted you to read, so I'm gonna go back. Boom, now you don't read. So, <laughs> but the idea is that um, now I don't remember what I was gonna say because I cannot read it. <laughs> but I don't know if I can do this now. I cannot. Okay, read. No. Try not to read, okay? I'll read. <laughs> so the, thing, the point here is that um, you're going to interact with different stakeholders when you want to join the company, right? And the funny thing is nobody will think that you're good at what they're asking you about because they might not ask you about program management. I mean, again, depends. If you're going to... Um, I feel Time for? <laughs> yeah, a problem. Um, they definitely know what the program manager is. Certain kinds of startups where I think they don't know they need one and you can become one there and start do a first kind of like transition to that, just enough to say I've been two years a program manager in this company. Um, they, um, they will ask you certain questions, more thinking about what they need, which will eventually be, be your job to connect what they need to what other uh, parts of the company need. And so, just a perfect example, the CEO, what the CEO wants to hear. The CEO wants to hear that you understand business. See, the, in, in my case, he's been 15 years in SEA, which is automotive company. And uh, so we wanted to understand, I, I was willing to learn about the automotive industry. And if you are trying to get into a startup like this type of startup I was mentioning, um, I think it's very critical that you show the CEO that you care about this sector, not only the product, that you actually, you know, actually put in some family WhatsApp if there's somebody new a dealer or and I actually connected them to a, two or three and I called them and I asked them how was the sector, if they knew Carnovo, if they knew, you know, and so he, he saw I cared about the sector and the other thing I tried to download, you know, documents and reports about the sector so he saw I actually know some numbers and I knew, how, there is a question we do, how many cars are, to people who, who comes to work, how many cars are sold in Spain every year, new cars? Uh, it's good they didn't ask me because I knew it, but I would have, they, people have to calculate. But I knew it actually, and so that, that was, I think he said, okay, this guy knows about business. He didn't ask me anything about her. And I wouldn't be surprised most people won't, especially when they don't know exactly why they did a program. Um, the CTO, which is here, but he was the, the CTO at the time I talked with Aldo, at that time, uh, where it was kind of a transition. Um, so I'm not an engineer. This is another thing. I asked there were there was a, a good amount of engineers here, so you won't have that much problem, uh, you know, showing the CTO that you actually know some things about uh, engineering, uh, but you'll have more challenge in the other part. But if you're not an engineer, or even if if, you, if you're an engineer, and I think it uh, might be good that in my case it was more about showing that I respect. Engineering, which although sounds obvious, it's not so common, sadly. I mean, it, it not, what I mean by respect is what I was saying before. Come on, it's just it's just a page. Come on, you can do it. This is five, I'm sure it's five minutes. You can just add this button here, you know, or uh, it's translate this page. We just did some project that took twice as much time, and you know, people's like, oh, this this should take shorter. Why? Why does it take? It's, a, it's like it's like a war page to. Program this, no? So 
this type of uh, respectability if you're not I mean, I did some programming, some HTML many years ago, and then I did a Swift course. So it's good to do some uh, basic stuff if I wouldn't be able to write some stuff. But I'm curious enough to, you know, do some courses online stuff that makes you understand the basics. Of course, I because I had my own startup and I did the design of the app and everything. You know, I did the basics of databases. Of course, you need you need technical basic basic knowledge. And then also, again, one of the reasons I think it's very critical that you get, you you make an effort for people to get along in general, especially with you, is because if you're not an engineer, the tech people will have to explain you at some point things. I mean, it's it's good that that they, that they know. You ever say? I think I said something like I said something, and he was getting mad uh, generally about something else. But I thought, don't get mad about my ignorance because this is this is about just it was about me not understanding this. And, and that should be okay. And that's that's the point of your position again. And this, if you're an engineer, will happen to you with marketing. You will be no, no, no. We need to do it. Like, no, but why do we do this? And you're gonna have to at some point accept that he is the marketer and the business is the business. And although it sounds obvious, like you know, designing something or writing something or everyone has an opinion on the color of the logo, um, respect for everyone's speciality, speciality, it's critical in my opinion. It will allow you to actually get their respect. Four years, and, and 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 so this is kind of the summary of the, one of the other uh, profiles. Um, one here, <coughs> I think again, it will be a, in part uh, that they hear, they feel that you know something that they know, mm -hmm. only, but especially that they feel that you know these other pieces that they don't know so much. So getting a sense for what everyone does and being able to explain it to other, to the rest of the thing, although it sounds obvious. So if you go, this is this is crazy that it's not so obvious, but I've even been myself in some general meeting just explaining what, you know, what some people is doing for people to stop simplifying or oversimplifying other people's work. This kind of like lobbyist activity um, will, should make you, you know, gain the respect of everyone that's like, okay, he's not gonna come and oversimplify my work, so, I can even be more honest with other people because sometimes people just are not honest because they're trying to, you know, protect their their turn, no? And if they know that you respect whatever how do your job, they're gonna tell you more and they're gonna trust that you're going to do, you know, a referee role in certain situations. If you become, for me, this is I haven't seen this in any book of product management, but for me, this is a critical skill to become because then you're not just, you know. You know, some in some companies I've seen in some companies that the product manager just, just makes gyro tickets and, and somebody sends a spreadsheet and they have to put it in that order or something. This is this is not, in my opinion, all the potential you can you can reach as a product manager. I don't know if I'm forgetting anything how the interview went, but I think this last case was um, was interesting. This different a lot of interviews. Any question? As um, anyone who's uh, in the entrepreneur, I don't know, wants to share different experiences with the process of, of, especially the interview process or becoming, especially if you haven't had a similar position before. I don't remember anymore who was in the product, but I'm looking at everyone. No? If, if it's your first time as a PM, maybe you, you get later with like the books that you have to read and so on, but what are the essentials of making sure I mean, the thing is, depends on the company and depends on what they need. Startup? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. You, you can be more convincing if you just, uh, I mean, if you're able to say, look, I know a little bit of this, I know I did about this, about this, about this, and the point of me being here is that this, you know, that this um, happens when it's connected. If everyone does their job and they don't care about the similar or the same reasons to do everything, um, I don't know if that makes sense. So what I'm trying to say is that nobody's, give, no, nobody's give, going to give, in my opinion, nobody's going to give you the opportunity, not if you know this, but if you, they don't think um, you've done a step before. It never happens from zero to, like, when I had to kind of like this process, I was able to say to the CEO, I started the company, it was a small startup, 
but I learned this, 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 this. Oh, okay, okay, okay. When I was talking to the CTO, you know, I did my startup, I did, I accept you know, programming, I did the design, I did uh, a lot of stuff, and I learned this, 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 and this. Oh, okay. When I talk to whatever, the, um, the designer, for example, uh, oh, I like this, this, what do you like? The design is different because you can get a sense of the sensibility of the other person's own design, not only knowledge or experience designing, but more in terms of do you understand why design is important or stuff like that. So I think it's more a matter of what type of experiences can you do before to have this complete profile. Because otherwise, if you jump into product manager in terms of in, in a position like this where, where, where you're too weak in certain areas, it's going to be too tough, in my opinion. It's going to be too tough because, because uh, I don't know, I think there's a timing. So if you see your timing, you feel comfortable with these different areas, go ahead. If you do some interviews, you, or you have experience, uh, you try some experience and it doesn't work, maybe it's a matter of just, oh, come on and win experience in this area. Maybe I should do, you know, some timing, you know, in, 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 if you're an engineer, just programming, if you're a marketer, just in some marketing department for a startup, maybe that's a good thing again. Just joining some startup, but in a, in a like less expectations position. The thing about this is that every time there's a professional transition, you go, you know, you you go down in your cachet, you know, like you may be the best, whatever, the best uh, designer in the world, but if you want to join in the position to product, you're not the best product in the world, or if you're the best. Uh, CTO or CEO or every time you change, whether well, product or something else, if you decide to change your career, you go down ten, three steps because because you're not the knowledge you had before. Maybe it's not useful here. I think I have something to add a bit to your question. Um, from again, I'm not super experienced, but if I had to give uh, one advice, a piece of advice, or recommendation to the most successful interviews I've seen, seeing on the other side, like what I've been more impressed of is. Um, when the value isn't what the product manager that wants to join your company in front of you is asking and not giving up. When you see somebody in front of you that's, you don't expect that person to solve the problems you're facing in the product for you because we cannot even solve it without the internal knowledge we, we have uh, talking to customers, talking to our stakeholders, but you see a sense of what they want to solve for with the questions they're, they're presenting to you as, as an interviewer and they're asking for context, they're asking for data that you can provide even if it's made up so they can actually contextualize their decisions. And you see it in the way they think and they ask if, if, it's, if it's a curious person that acknowledges that he knows nothing. Again, it's part of like our acknowledging that as a product managers, we will never know as much as we think of our customers. But when you see that in a person sitting in front of you, that's when you cross it with all the experience and all the other skills. But I've seen the most successful interviews be super curious people asking mm -hmm. uh, a lot of questions. Yeah. Uh, just to add to that, I, I think it also that goes back to uh, how good is that person on spotting opportunities. So you can ask for this information that when you see they're, they're asking the right questions, you see they're going to the same core principles that you share uh, in a company. So what opportunities, what long vision, uh, you have, and that's something that uh, I think you should definitely add on this one. Uh, is like knowing where the product is going, going where the market is going, right. uh, or at least asking the correct questions to know where yeah. that's going to happen. Totally agree. Actually, you're right. Maybe I should, I should add this because um, when I was talking to Ferran, I remember just telling him, you know, I'm. I'm I like I like the company because I believe in what they're doing. I believe in the, the way you know sales people, especially when I did some calls, I realized this is crap. And I haven't bought a new car in my life, so I have to do a little bit of research. And I realized this is definitely one sector that needs to be rethought. And me sharing this kind of you know I believe I understand. I think it may also like oh, okay, good. I, I like you're not just coming because you're some kind of visionary or something. In the end, you're going to drive the product. So all the feedback that you say you get with the soft skills, which is super important, you, in the end, will make some decision. Yeah. And that decision has to go in the right way. So 
you need to know what the right way is or how to spot those opportunities. Exactly. Uh, and that, that I think is like a super hard thing on the product management. Yeah. You, as you said, you're going to be wrong many times. Yeah. Yeah, I think again, like with ideas, I think with criteria, you have to be even better at spotting other people's ideas and criteria than even trusting your own. I mean, I, I might have ideas, I might have my own criteria, but I found out that it's much, much more important to spot you know, each other's opinions and try, oh, that makes sense, that makes sense, that makes sense, okay, and then putting in somewhere and building an argument with this, then just thinking that it's gonna come out of you because it's not, because you, I don't know, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> I mean, at least in my experience, again, once, you, I don't know, maybe you're Steve Jobs and it comes up, but I don't think even Steve Jobs, to be honest, I think Steve Jobs is very good at, you know, pitching people to say whatever they were thinking, and once he would get it, like, he would switch. There's uh, some people sharing these anecdotes that he would be like, no, 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 I believe this, 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 And then once he would be convinced with it, okay, boom, and then he, would, he wouldn't argue more. So I think it's, uh, it's a, I totally agree, it's a beautiful thing. How should we express this? I'll remember, mental note. It's I it's really care about it. Exactly. Because I see the priorities, I see a lot. It seems to be really ruthless in what we're going to focus on, just align with my strategy. Yeah, again, I can do a kind of a proposal of priorities, but again, it's, it's at the end, it's decided with the rest of the team. My only feeling uh, about being ruthless is once we've decided, let's not get lost in this new shiny thing. This is the, the craziest thing, and it happens. And it happens with reason, even in our startup, it happens because we're not sure about, you know, everything, I mean, is not defined, and we're not 100% where it should be. We should be so we're trying to look for new, you know, diamonds that will allow us to become what we want to become. So it's normal that things come up, but you need to be very careful because, it, you know, it's crazy that something that two months ago was the most important thing in the world we should stop the world, and now this, I mean, this is disappearing away from us. We didn't have time to execute on it, and now it's done. And we were talking the other day with Jared, it's like, what, what happened with this? I don't know, but. So once ago, the world was going to stop if we didn't do it. So it's important to make it because it's invisible to everyone. So it's important to insisting to everyone that we as humans have this problem. And uh, hopefully at some point when something new comes up, you're like, OK, are you sure this is important? Because, because maybe it's another new toy we want to you know, try. And again, because it feels like programming is like, Molting Legos, you know, they're like, ah, yeah, let's put it. I mean, not even wait for the spring planning. Just put it. Come on, I'm sure you can do it. I mean, you do it on the bus with the phone, probably, or something. You know? <laughs> and I'm not even a programmer, but I, I, I see their faces when something like that happens, and I'm like, ah, nobody's gonna kill somebody. <laughs> okay, this is it. I mean, the resources I'm, I'm gonna, you know, post these on, I don't know, a blog somewhere. This course of Udemy. Perl School is something that actually a friend of mine started in San Francisco, which is there's, they have a book, and then they have like, these courses. Check it out, I think they're doing interesting stuff. Mind the Bird, many of you probably know. They have a Slack group, they share some stuff. They do some events also. I don't know if that's competitors out there. But um, <laughs> the books, I'm a big, 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 uh, big uh, book uh, reader. I, I actually post them in my Instagram so you can see at least what I read. Uh, and I don't read uh, what, like 0.1% of what I would like. Actually, my Amazon is exploding off, save for later. <laughs> and, um, and these frameworks that are also in the books, of course. And uh, I love Medium. I think Medium, I mean, they're doing an amazing job at, at knowing about you, learning about you. Once you open the newsletter, the newsletter, the next one is better. And at some point, you open the newsletter, you're like, fuck, I want to read everything. You know, it's just 9 a.m. And it's like, okay. And uh, Intercom, Intercom is an amazing company, like this is the kind of company that is super product focused and they have this amazing blog. And these are some articles, I mean random articles that I actually found thinking about you know how to you know organize this uh, this specific subject of how to start in product management. Um, I have to say that the, the part I'm more interested as you might have seen is the soft skills. So I'm really Curious to know, you know, your thoughts specifically on the importance of soft skills. So, if you have any thought, any question, or uh, I don't know, idea you want to share, please feel free. And in fact, um, I mean, this is again, I, I added this. Your goal is to connect the dots and remind everyone who the same boat. I just 
tell this, you know, sometimes we forget this, but um, that's it. Thank you very much for listening.